people with disabilities are very closeted in their homes. And it surprises people when they see myself out and about. And it especially surprises people when they learn what I do, and that's skydiving. It's always uh, intriguing to hear what they have to say about their view on sports and then to hear it change when I tell them my view on sports. On August 25th, 2009, was the day that I took my last steps and the day that my life would change forever. Mm. Fast forward six years and I'm in Dubai setting world records for essentially the same thing that got me in this situation. And I'm living and I'm pushing myself to possibilities that I never thought could be done. The idea of the record came up as a silly little idea. I mean, first of all, everyone wants to fly in the wind tunnel. I thought it was going to be something as simple as no training needed, let me just hop in there and push myself. I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm glad I went through the training. It ended up being one of the hardest things I've done in my life. A lot of the instructors like, I haven't flown for 30 minutes straight, you know, and these are the guys are the top flyers in the world and they're like, and they didn't even have a good response from me. They didn't even know how to deal with it. The first time I got to one hour mark was, was amazing. And then I tried an hour again and it didn't go so well. I left the tunnel with severe headache, extreme sore, soreness through my, through my bodies. Even the part of the body that I couldn't feel was super effective. It was a reality check, you know, maybe this wasn't going to be possible. At this point, it's go time. Tomorrow is the record, and I'm going to have to push through it. It's a great relief feeling when you start. All that hype before you go in the wind tunnel, and then you hop in the wind tunnel, and you're like, okay, now it's starting, and you just go. So when I'm in the wind tunnel, and uh, I feel something not right, it's instantly paranoia. Man, what's going on? Is it, you know, do I need to go to the bathroom? Yeah, is my toe curled up the wrong way? Is, you know, my shoes tied on too tight? And this is only halfway through to the record. Way too early to be experiencing these things, I thought. But what do you do? You just push on. And all of a sudden, it's an hour. I've been flying in the wind tunnel for one hour straight, 60 minutes. As soon as I hit the record, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I could stop right now. And I would have the record, and I would have all this, you know, great feeling. But that record, it's so old, let's, let's see how far we can take this. And, and that's how I pushed on through three hours. And then I'm just struggling and struggling to three hours. I'm getting nauseous, I'm getting sore and tired and cold. And when the clock finally switched over to three hours, it was amazing. And right at that time, my friends who had been watching, they hop in the tunnel with me and they're celebrating with me in the tunnel when I'm flying. And that's an incredible feeling of accomplishment. Not only for me, but for my friends there who supported me through the whole process. So as much as I was by myself during the record, I had all this support with me. Even including the audience telling me what time it was and how much longer to go. Jenny was writing down song lyrics, so I would have a song stuck in my head and Ange would make me a little picture to, you know, to show me like, hey, you're at you know, two hours now. And it's incredible when I fly three hours, but what's more incredible is that Everyone comes together to see me fly three hours in one time and to set the world record. Now that I know what that feeling's like, I always want that feeling and I'm always gonna push myself. And this record let me have that feeling. And here I am in Dubai, living the life that I've always wanted to live and doing the things that I've always wanted to do despite the disability. And isn't it a true testimony that I can still be the same person, even though physically I'm not? They told me, well, 
they told me I was going to be checked out for head down after three hours. <laughs> <laughs> this, this event's been sponsored by Ibuprofen, the painkiller of choice. Uh, you should watch him trying to get in his chair after three hours of flying. This could be, <laughs> this could be quite an artistic well, dismount. He needs to drive home. He came here driving. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's got a drive on him. And explore. And explore. <laughs> <laughs>